Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is pull. And this verb was suggested by the viewer Luis. So I want to say a special thank you for that. And I really want to note that pull is really going to be our verb of the week. And that's because there are so many phrasal verbs, so many different ways to use this verb. I didn't want to have a 30-minute uh, video just about one verb. So I'm going to break it into three parts this week. Uh, so let's begin with part one here of pull. Now, today we're going to start with some general definitions or ways that you might use pull. Again, this is not going to be all of the definitions. I'm going to save uh, some of those for the uh, next two days. But one way you might hear or see the verb pull used can mean to exert force on someone or something so as to cause it to move toward oneself. So to help us understand that definition, I've got a little picture. So I want uh, everybody to take a quick look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can see a picture of a door. The door has a handle and a little sign that says pull, right? So you grab the door and you exert force toward yourself to open it, right? That's the, the most common way that we use this verb. Now, a second way you might hear or see the verb pull used can mean to be attached to the front of something and be the source uh, of forward movement of that thing. So again, I've got another picture here to help us understand the second definition. So uh, if you look here, you can see horses. We might say the horses are pulling uh, the carts behind it right? They are the source of the forward movement. A third way you might encounter the verb pull can mean to damage a muscle, a ligament, or some other part of one's body by straining it. Sometimes um, you will hear athletes mention or, or commentators talking about athletes mention that someone is out because they've pulled a muscle or they've pulled a ligament, they've strained it. For now, you should know that pull is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all you need to do is add ing and that forms pulling. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by adding ed. Our base verb pull, ul, ends in a voiced l sound. This means our ed ending is just going to make a d sound. We're not going to add an extra syllable as we say it. So it should sound like this, pulled, pulled. Okay. But now I think we're ready to begin to tackle some of the many phrasal verbs that we use with pull. The first phrasal verb we'll discuss is to pull about or pull around. Generally, this is used to describe uh, the action of dragging, hauling, forcing someone or something from place to place. An example of this might be, the children pulled the babysitter around the backyard from activity to activity. Right? So maybe uh, you can kind of picture some excited children wanting to play with a babysitter and come over to this area and uh, maybe we'll play on a slide or some swings, right? And now they're asking her, come this way, we're going to play in the sandbox, right? So they're forcing her from spot to spot or activity to activity. Uh, another way to use the phrasal verb pull around um, can mean to gradually return to good health, uh, a, a good level of performance or to return to a certain level of value. An example of this might be, the patient is finally pulling around. Okay. And I'm realizing as I describe that, I forgot to, I'm going to try and do a better job here of mentioning the different verb tenses I'm using. So the patient is finally pulling around. Uh, that would be the returning to good health. We're just using a present progressive or present continuous verb in that sentence. In the first example about the babysitter, uh, pulled around there was in the simple past tense. 
Now let's move to another phrasal verb, the phrasal verb pull ahead. You're going to notice many of these phrasal verbs can have multiple meanings. We're going to discuss two ways to use pull ahead. The first can mean to physically move in front of another. An example of this might be, will you pull your car ahead? So we're asking like, pull it in front of mine, or uh, maybe if I'm gesturing to a particular spot, right? I want the car to be in front of it. A second way you'll hear pull ahead use can mean to move into a position of greater success. Um, oh, shoot. And the first, will you pull ahead is simple future with will. Okay. Now, to move to a position of greater success means, or, or an example of that, um, our team pulled ahead in the final minute of the game, right? This is uh, to say we were winning, right? That's another simple past tense sentence. Another phrasal verb you might encounter is to pull apart. This can also have a number of different meanings. One way to use it can mean to separate, disentangle, or disassemble something or some things, right? So uh, we might be talking about two objects or two people um, it, when it comes to separating or disentangling. An example of this, the teacher pulled apart the fighting students. Okay. That's another simple past tense sentence, right? We're kind of imagining, right, the, the fighting students being separated by the teacher. A second way to use pull apart can mean to break, rip, or destroy something. An example of this, this issue is pulling apart our community. That's an example of a present progressive or present continuous sentence. Maybe someone is speaking uh, about something that's um, kind of causing destruction, right? It's uh, breaking up groups, uh, causing division. Um, that is unfortunately something we hear a lot about here in the United States. So uh, certain matters, certain loyalties uh, to certain uh, political parties, right, can maybe destroy this uh, cohesiveness uh, that's normally felt in many societies. But let's move on to some more phrasal verbs. The next one we're going to discuss is to pull aside. This generally means that we're having someone step away for a private discussion. An example of this, I'll pull the doctor aside and ask a few more questions before dad's surgery. Here's another simple future sentence using will, right? Someone's uh, maybe making a promise to other family members. Maybe there are some concerns, but uh, uh, this person or a group of people don't feel comfortable asking these questions. So they, they want a private discussion with the doctor. The next phrasal verb we'll discuss is to pull at. This can mean to tug or yank at something. An example of this, he always pulls at sweaters and complains about them being uncomfortable. There's an example of a simple present sentence. I made that sentence in honor of my brother. Uh, my mom would always find very cute uh, themed uh, sweaters for holiday pictures and things. And he would uh, kind of pull again at it. He'd tug it, he'd yank it and complain. <laughs> That was his habit or routine. Now, a second way to use pull at can mean to demand or impose on one's attention, focus, or concern. An example of this, work, caring for my family, and school are pulling at me right now. Right? So, uh, this sounds like uh, many of my students right, uh, who describe uh, all the demands that they have on their time. What's taking their attention, their focus? That's another present progressive or present continuous sentence. The last phrasal verb we're going to discuss today is to pull away. This can have a number of different meanings. We're going to talk about four ways to use pull away. The first is to drag, haul, or force something. An example of this, we pulled him away from the park after three hours. There's another simple past tense sentence, right? So kind of 
you might think of forcefully, forcefully moving someone from a particular area. This might be a, a small child who just wanted to stay at the park for forever. <laughs> a second way to use pull away can mean to withdraw or move backward. An example of this, many teenagers pull away if their parents try and hug them. So it's that idea of like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't show affection. Don't pretend like you know me. Right? Again, that's a simple present sentence describing uh, a habit or a routine. A third way to use pull away can mean to have a vehicle just move. So you might think of uh, a car, a train driving away. An example of this, she pulled away and waved, right? You might think of that as she drove off, right? It's another simple past tense sentence. The last way we're going to talk about using pull away can mean to move to a superior position. This is something I hear uh, quite often uh, in connection to sports and, and other competitions. An example of this. The team pulled away in the second half. Right? So they, again, uh, that superior position, you might think of that as a winning position. Now, remember, this is not all the phrasal verbs with pull. You're going to see uh, additional videos and additional explanations over the next two videos. So stay tuned for more. But for now, let's take a moment to look at some words and re phrases related to pull. And the first word we're going to dis discuss today uh, is the noun form of this word. The noun pull has the exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation. When we use the noun pull, it can have a number of different meanings, just like our verb. We're going to talk about five ways you might encounter this noun. The first way the noun pull gets used can refer to an act of taking hold of something and exerting force to draw it toward oneself. An example of that might be, ouch, the baby just gave my hair a pull, right? So it can happen accidentally, right? As they're kind of uh, reaching, grabbing for other things, right? So a second way to use the noun pull can refer to a handle that one might use to hold in order to exert that force, in order to engage in the act of pulling. An example of how you might hear this used, they bought some new pulls for their kitchen drawers and cabinets. A third way to use the noun pull can refer to an injury, again, to a muscle or a ligament that's caused by straining it. An example of this, she'll be out two weeks with a hamstring pull. Another way to use a uh, pull uh, can be to uh, talk about a force that draws someone or something in a particular direction. An example of this, the pull of starting her own business finally became too much. And I've got another example of that. Um, so uh, I'll, you might think of a, a force causing uh, a particular action. That last example sentence I have here, the political pull from this small group of lawmakers brought the matter to a debate. So their influence, that might be a, another good way to think of how this word pull can be used. Now we're going to discuss uh, another phrase here. Uh, one phrase, maybe you've heard it before, is for something to be like pulling teeth. The idea here is that it something is extremely difficult to do. An example of this in a sentence. Finding a time when all 15 of us are free to meet is like pulling teeth. Maybe you've had that uh, situation at work or uh, with a group of friends. Um, the more people involved, the more difficult it can be to find a time uh, to, to meet or to be together. Our last phrase for today's video is to pull an all-nighter. It just means to stay up all night. This phrase um, 
tends to be used in a lot of college and university settings when students might be staying up very late before uh, a big project, before finals or midterms. You may hear it uh, in the workforce a little bit, but again, the idea is one continues to stay up, never goes to bed, doesn't sleep. An example of this. He pulled an all-nighter, finalizing his capstone project. So here, this might be a, a project that kind of demonstrates all the knowledge uh, that has been gained in a particular field of study. Thanks so much for watching part one of Poll. I hope you'll all come back tomorrow and watch part two. Thanks, Luis, for the suggestion. Have a great day, everybody.